Well, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for taking time to join us today as we would like to give you some deeper understanding of what remote learning will look like for the Prep to 6 students at the Werribee campus. So today I'm joined by the principal of primary, Lynn Moffat, as well as the, the two heads of learning modules. So Kathy Ward as the K to 2 and then also Joe Harworth as the years 3 to 6 uh, head of learning module. But as we have always as a tradition when we gather together, we like to pray. So I'd like to, if you wouldn't mind, I'd actually like to lead us in a word of prayer. Let's pray together. Gracious God and Heavenly Father, we say thank you for this day. Thank you for the gift of this each day. And thank you for the gift of life to enable us to, to enjoy uh, your creation. Father, as we come uh, before you in this meeting, we're going to be talking about the future. And we just ask that we commit this meeting to you. But we recognise as we consider the future, you will be walking with us step by step, just as you have been walking with us in the past and as you have throughout this day. For that, Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you to your goodness to us. Thank you for your faithfulness to us. And we just want to commit ourselves afresh to you now in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you. So before Lynn, Kathy, and Joe come to speak, I'd actually like to just take a few moments and make some introductory remarks, if that's okay. Over the break, I found myself wondering how the Heathdale community were traveling. And as I was pondering and reflecting on this question, I found myself giving thanks to God for this fantastic, vibrant community. See, I say this with a sense of gratefulness because I love being part of this community. And for this, I also want to say thank you to the families for the privilege and honour it is to be able to partner together, and especially during this challenging time. And to our families who are on the front line and essential workers during this pandemic, the staff and I want to say to you, thank you. Thank you for what you do, and thank you for keeping us safe during this time. You see, we find ourselves in a place where we're all, uh, we all hoped that we would not be. And this is far from the ideal situation, but it reflects the seriousness of the COVID pandemic. And when the state government announced uh, stage three restrictions last week, and the subsequent decision for schools to move to remote learning for prep to year 10 students, this announcement brought additional challenges to us, but along with it, necessary actions. And one of those immediate actions was for our school to act on the advice of the health department, the state government and independent schools Victoria to also move uh, to remote learning. So when our response team met and we discussed this, we considered how we would move forward within uh, remote learning. And one of the considerations that was the front of mind for all of us was, we have such a diverse community and, and a one size fits all approach just cannot be adopted. See, what will work for one student may not work for another. And what will work for one family may not work for another. And what works for one group of teachers may not also work for another. See, the one size fits all just can't be adopted. You know, we've had some well-intentioned suggestions on how we should manage remote learning moving forward. And this includes suggestions such as all day online classes for students. You know, it's almost like Zoom classes is another phrase you may have heard. And this is an idea that we have considered. And although on the surface, this is a concept that probably could work well for some students and possibly for some subjects and for some year levels, it does not necessarily mean that it will work for well for all students all the time. And nor does it guarantee effective, deep and rich learning. So as the response team and I we're in discussion, what we started to focus on was what best supports students learning through our excellent learning programs. And by identifying the learning intentions for each lesson and for units of work, 
and how well students are meeting these learning intentions is one of our key learning focuses. And focusing on learning intentions doesn't matter whether this is happening in the classroom on campus or on in an inline in environment. See, our commitment to families is to see each student being able to demonstrate at least one year of learning, of growth, learning and growth learning each and every year. And we do that, this through our carefully constructed curriculum, which is underpinned by a Christian worldview and alongside clearly identified learning intentions. Something else we've also considered is that we want your feedback. And we, I want to say thank you to the families who have already completed and returned the survey that went out earlier this week. I was talking with Sarah earlier today and she said, I think there's over 400 families have already responded. So if you're one of those 400 families, thank you so much, really appreciate it. But if you're not one of those 400 families, it's not too late. There's always time to give us some feedback and complete that survey and return it to us as soon as possible. Because we'd love to hear your feedback and your reflections on the, the remote learning that has occurred in term two. Because as I said, they, we value and appreciate your feedback. And we recognise though, that there will be some of pieces of feedback that we'll be possibly be able to use immediately. And then there will be others that we may require some longer term strategies to be developed around them. Or other pieces of feedback that may not really benefit, benefit our community at this time. So this is why the feedback is important and it actually helps us to make good and informed decisions. You know, the well-being of our students and our staff continues to be the utmost priority. So if you or your child needs pastoral care support, our student pastoral carers are there to journey with you or your child during this time. So I would encourage you, if you need this support, feel free to reach out to them. But also please continue to reach out to us if you need that financial support or assistance due to a job loss or a business uh, impact. We, we want to be able to stand with you, as we've said before. So please, if you're in this situation, reach out to us because we'll find a way that we can stand with you. You know, it was really lovely to see our kinder kids as well as our year 11 students return this week. And, and one, there's one other thing that I do know, that I know that the prep uh, to year six years, uh, prep to year six staff are also longing to connect with their students who've been placed into their care this year. You know, they're longing to connect with your son and your daughter. And I know that they are desperate to do that and they'll do that through remote learning, which will commence next week. So that, that sort of seems a good spot where I might just hand it now over to Lynn and uh, Joe and Kathy because they're going to speak a bit more about the details of what remote learning will look like for us here on the Werribee campus. So I'm going to hand it over to Lynn and then I'll catch back up with you again later in our uh, question and answer time. So thanks so much. Thanks, Lynn. Well, thank you, Ross. And it's great to see everybody out there today. Of course, we can't see you, but I always like to give a wave to our students who might be watching. So hello, all primary students. We're really looking forward to having you online very soon, and I hope you've all had a lovely break. So we do understand, parents, that we are now in a place that, of course, we did not choose, nor did we foresee. However, we're going to work the very best that we can to support every student in their learning over the coming weeks. We have learnt many things, as Ross has said, from the last experience in remote learning, and we really do value what we have had in feedback from families, from teachers, and certainly from our students at times. And we want to share some of these changes and things that we've taken on board today. Firstly, can I say thank you so much for the effort and work of every family. It was a big task, and really we are really appreciated appreciative of all that you as a family have done to ensure that your child was doing the very best they could. We know it's not easy to balance work and home and students 
schoolwork at the same time. So again, we will be with you in this coming season. It was certainly great, as Ross has said, to see our students return. It's re it was really a happy time as we saw children return last term and uh, they came with confidence and, uh, and, and really a lovely attitude to resume with their friends and their teachers and learning in the classroom. So we're going to be looking forward to that in the future, hopefully not too distant future. Well, what did we learn and what might change this time round? Well, as you know, Canvas became our online learning platform for our preps to sixes and we, during the first few weeks of last remote learning experience, we onboarded all the students from prep to year four. It was a great task and it was very profitable, a most successful outcome. This time our staff are preparing again a balanced blended learning package to suit our learners and provide valuable teaching encompassing clear learning intentions. Our students need connections with their teachers and to engage in their learning in practical ways and our staff are working towards having that occur this time round. The structure of the school day is very important along with those purposeful learning tasks. So Joe and Kathy will talk a little bit more about the structure of those days for the prep to twos and the threes to sixes. And of course, we do understand families have different daily schedules when learning may take place, such as weekends or evenings. And we want to again ensure that every child can engage in their learning at the time that is most appropriate for your family. Well, the feedback we did receive was that the Canvas portal was very successful for students and students now have learned how to access that. And of course, we'll be refining that as we go forward. We were able to assist parents who did not have access to a computer or a tablet for their child at home. Some students needed to do their schoolwork during the weekends and we again supported families then and we will in the future by providing those recorded lessons that are easily accessed at the time appropriate. We also had feedback that doing homework became difficult. So this time around for primary students, homework outside of the school day won't be required. I can hear a cheer from some of our students. Our remote school day will be more structured and our heads of learning modules will explain this soon. Regarding learning, well, our Canvas pages have been refined and we hope they'll be easier to navigate. The privacy of our students is very important, so we have structured technology use and our platforms with particular space for students in an age appropriate way. And if families do need a device going forward, please do contact us and we will support you with this. Some take home books and work are being prepared for some year levels. If this relates to your child, you'll be contacted to collect the items from the campus at an arranged time. More news towards the end of this week on that. We do have on-site learning for those essential workers for, who have children who must work here at school. Our teaching staff will man that and be with the students. So our students will be able to come and do their remote learning program here on site and have our own Heathdale staff helping them through the day. The drop-off arrangements will be very similar to how it operated last term. So we will use the car parks and staff will meet your child where you can hand them over. All of our prep to year six students on site will be in the main area of the college. And again, we will send out correspondence very soon to you about which rooms they will be. Before and after school care will still occur through big childcare for any family that wants to access those times. So please contact them if you want more information. Now I'm going to hand over to Kathy, our prep to two head of learning module, and that will be followed by Joe and Kathy will have some great information for our younger students and families. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn, and welcome everyone and a warm welcome to all our new families that will be joining us this term. As Lynn has already mentioned, we have taken on board your feedback about remote learning experience last semester. So in response, there have been some adjustments to our school day and we have structured this time around so the school day during remote learning will have five sessions. Whenever possible, our goal is to have your child 
begin and end the day with their homeroom teacher. Your child will typically connect with their homeroom teacher during three of, out of the five sessions during devotion, session one and homeroom. We have also ensured that a teacher will always be present online to support students during each session of the day. So that is a change from last time. If the homeroom teachers have extra responsibilities, a specialist or a learning enhancement teacher will fill in for them for that day. So a typical day. Devotions will run from 8.45 to 9 o'clock and it's generally a time for the homeroom teacher to conduct a short devotion, mark the role and outline the activities for the day. Devotions are followed by three learning sessions. So session one will generally be taken by the homeroom teacher and focus on literacy. Teachers will outline the tasks to be covered in the session. They will either give live instructions for the session or direct students to watch a teaching video approximately about 10 minutes long and then ask them to complete an activity. More than one lesson may be covered during a teaching session and the homeroom teacher will remain present for the students to clarify instructions and for the students to show them their work that they're usually very proud of. So after session one, the students will have a 30 minute recess, time to wind down from their work and get ready for the next session. Session two and three will be with a teacher from that year level or a specialist teacher. They will outline the instructions for the session and again they might refer them to a live instruction or a video to watch and explain an activity for the students to do independently or with the help of parents. We know that you are often involved. Teachers will remain present for students to check in and ask any questions if they're not understanding what's been required of them. Lunch will follow session two and that runs from 12 o'clock to 1.30 for children doing remote learning at home. Our final session is from 2.50 to 3.10 and that will be an opportunity for children to chat with their homeroom teachers, to touch base, to see each other. It's a more informal time. The teachers can answer questions, any concerns and yes, it's a more, a less formal opportunity for students to interact. And some teachers may even use this to do the ever popular show and tell where children get to bring and brag an item. So the students on site, um, they will follow the same program as the students working remotely. There will be some differences as it will be a mixed group from various classes. Therefore, each day they will choose to watch a devotion delivered by one of the teachers at that year level and the next day they will watch a different teacher. The teacher on site will provide the instructions for each session and have students watch the instructional vision uh, videos on Canvas as well. Activities will be completed at school and marked by the teacher on site, so they will need to have all their books and resources ready for that day. Students will continue to follow the good hygiene practices that we started last term and you know, they'll wash their hands each time they arrive at school, before they eat and when they come back in after recess and lunch. The subjects covered, as we do at school, our emphasis is on literacy and numeracy, but we will also be teaching all the other subjects, science, HASS. And whilst there are three learning sessions, there may be up to five lessons per day. So sometimes in a learning session, they might do a literacy activity followed by a math activity. So although there is an increase in screen time seems unavoidable, we will not require your child to be on screen for the entirety of the day. And in response to parent feedback after last remote uh, learning sessions, uh, we're reducing the number of specialist classes. So specialist classes, music, French will just happen once a fortnight and we're going to simplify the instructions, particularly for music and French. So there are recordings. All our live sessions will be recorded and placed on Canvas later that day for students who can't attend the live sessions. So we ask parents to ensure the safety of your child by making sure the video is turned off and the microphone is muted. These steps avoid your child being seen when the recording is posted later to Canvas and allows the viewers to watch the session without constant interruptions. 
Now, some children do need extra supervision, I've got to say. Some of the young ones like to go back and turn the video on and do a little song and dance and try and steal the teacher's limelight. So we do ask parents just to check in on them, make sure that they haven't turned those videos back on. Teachers may also conduct some small group sessions where the children are allowed to have their videos on and the microphones on. These will be recorded by the teachers, but they won't be posted to Canvas for other people to view. Now, thank you to our resident designer, Mr. Jeremy Whelan from Year One. We have a new looking streamlined Canvas pages for prep to Year Two, and I think he has done an awesome job. So, I will show you. So, I'm just demonstrating with Year One today. So, when you open up Canvas, as per last time, you will see the weekly overview and then we have a page per day. So you can click on Monday and see all the tasks and videos that will re be required for Monday and for the other days of the week. Once you click on Monday, it will take you through to the next slide, which shows the Homeroom Live AM. So when children want to click for the devotions, they will click the Homeroom AM tile. And then later that day, they will click on the homeroom PM tile for the end of the day session. And then all the learning sessions, session one with the homeroom teacher, if they click on that. Now, sometimes once they've clicked on session one, it will take them through to the next slide, which shows the very cute avatars of their teachers. So the children will know who to click on to see their teacher live on Canvas. And then once they've viewed that um, video or that session with their teacher, they can click on the return to home page and go back to the main sessions. So I really hope you enjoy the new look canvas and that it's easy for you and your child to navigate. And assessments. So parents and uh, students will be asked to submit work weekly. There will be one sample for English and one for mathematics and then one other and that may be in the form of a quiz or some other task that the teacher sets for the students. So we're asking parents this time to submit all their work through Canvas using the work submission buttons. So I think that's made a lot easier this time and I think you'll enjoy that more than having to take photos of things and post it on via email. And, and in this way, through Canvas, teachers can provide direct feedback in Canvas as well. Teachers will also complete monthly running records to assess progress in reading and individual invitations will be sent out for these. Contacting staff. You can email your child's teacher directly if you have a question about your child's learning or their engagement, but we've also created year level emails such as prep at Heathdale for general questions which any teacher from that year level can answer. That means you're more likely to get a quicker response because anyone from that team can provide an answer. You can also email me directly if you have any concerns or suggestions. I'm certainly open to hearing from you and really enjoy those discussions that I've had. I've had parents sending in, you know, wonderful library resources that, that we can suggest for parents to tack into. And so I really appreciate all those ideas. Thank you so much. So I hope you now have a good idea about what will be offered in prep to two for the prep to two students. And I'll now hand you over to Joe Harworth, who will talk about our three to six module. Thank you, Kathy, and uh, thank you everyone for spending that time with us uh, this afternoon um, to learn about what we're going to be doing with our remote learning this session. And just to run you through a few things for the three to six module. Um, like the prep to twos, our new structure comes through in the form of the five uh, sessions that the teachers will be available with. And the key reason for one of the key reasons that we have set up our um, sessions is so that there's always a teacher available for your student. So during each session, a teacher will be available to uh, your student for any questions, for troubleshooting, uh, general help with their learning tasks. So they've got your devotion in the morning and then session one and then the homeroom, which would be covered by the homeroom teacher. So 
like a normal day at school, the majority of the time is spent with their homeroom teacher. And then the other sessions, sessions two and session three, may be covered by another teacher, uh, a learning assistant or a specialist teacher there. So the start of these sessions, the teacher introduces the tasks and the expectations. And from that point, the teacher will remain in the session so that if a student needs support, it gets a little bit stuck in one of their tasks or isn't quite sure of what to do, the teacher is there and present for them, similar to how the classroom would operate. And essentially like what Kathy has mentioned, the five sessions a day involve that devotion and end of day homeroom. So the homeroom teacher is present for the majority of that time. Uh, subjects being taught. So regular school subjects are still being taught. Like at school, we have that strong focus on numeracy and literacy learning areas. And the specialist subjects will run, but as one lesson a fortnight in order to give students that maximum time to be able to work through those tasks and not feel overloaded. Uh, student assessment will still be occurring and this will be completed through submission of tasks on Canvas. And for the fives and sixes, they would be quite familiar with this. They'd be used to this process. The threes and fours, um, this will be something that they'll be getting uh, more familiar with over the coming weeks as they learn that they can submit all work through Canvas rather than emailing or anything like that. Uh, each week, your child will be expected to submit a numeracy and literacy sample through that Canvas submissions uh, system. So please check with your child at the end of each week that they have completed these required tasks. And on top of that, there may be uh, other tasks that need to be submitted uh, for other subject areas in the form of a quiz or um, a different uh, task that needed to be submitted for them. And Canvas is the platform for all of our remote learning now going into this uh, second phase so we won't be using the emails for submitting work or uh, that type of thing canvas is the one-stop uh, platform for that our students will be able to access their resources their live sessions submit tasks all of the things that they need to be able to do to achieve uh, during this time and like the prep to twos the canvas home pages will look slightly different as we have aimed to develop a simple and easy way uh, to navigate the different tasks for your student. And as well as that, the announcements page on Canvas will also be utilized uh, by teachers to post answers to some frequently asked questions, either by students or by parents. So uh, on Canvas, you'll be able to see that as well. Regarding online expectations, now like term two, when the online sessions are occurring, we do require the student cameras to be off. Uh, and this is for the student privacy reasons. We record each live session and it's important that your privacy is protected. Um, students have developed an understanding of positive online behavior and behaving in a way that supports the learning of all of the students in their group. This includes keeping the microphone muted during presentations and um, presentations by the teacher and ensuring that all chat is respectful and in line with our code of conduct. And as we did for term two, Microsoft Teams will be the uh, platform that we utilize all of our live sessions, which will then be posted to Canvas. And please note that with Microsoft Teams, uh, teachers are not able to manage student created groups on Microsoft Teams. We've got some very savvy students who have been able to work out that they can uh, create their own group without, uh, without teacher permissions. Now, our recommendation is that Teams is used only for the online learning sessions, and this is what is monitored by our staff. Anything that occurs outside of these parameters would need to be monitored by parents of the students involved, in the same way that we can't monitor a Facebook uh, group or a WhatsApp chat that students might be involved in if it's outside of our school parameters. Um, I'd now like to hand back to Mr. Grace for questions and answers. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Cathy. And thank you, Lynn, for, for the lovely and great information. Really quite helpful. Well done. Now, uh, what I should have said at the start of this session was in your chat area on the online is an opportunity for you to put any questions in there. So please, if you've got a question, can we ask you to submit it via the chat? 
because I've actually got a team who are working behind the scenes for me. They're gathering these questions up and then they're presenting to me and placing them on a screen over there in which I'll be able to read them. And then I'm going to do what all good executive principals do. When I read the question, then I'm going to delegate to someone else to answer it, So, which will be from there. So, oh, first question is up. Will teacher sessions be a video call for the whole session or is it just that teachers will be available only for questions if the students call them? Great question, clarify. I'm going to hand over to one of you two. So, Joe, go ahead and answer that for us, please. Um, for the teacher sessions, so the way that it would work is that the teacher would come on board with a video um, or a live video where they explain the lesson, they talk through the tasks, uh, they field any questions that they might have. And the expectation is that this would last for maybe 10 to 15 minutes where the teacher is speaking uh, to the group. From that point on, once it's uh, decided that students are able to then work on their tasks, the video uh, chat aspect of that would close, but the teacher would main, remain present for their entirety of that session time so that if a child is unsure or needs extra help, they are able to write something in the chat and then the teacher can respond to that. So it would be a mix where the teacher starts off with a live uh, video conference and then takes a, a, um, an approach where they're, they're present, they're there if needed for, by the student. I hope that answers that one. Thanks. I might just add for PrEP2, we understand that the children won't be able to type a question in many cases to the teacher. So the video will remain live so that the child can talk to the teacher live if they have a question or need something to be clarified. Yes, it's a question that's come up regarding uh, what our on campus learning is going to look like. So just a reminder that we are asking our essential work, workers families to contact us via a survey link as to whether they would like their ch children here on campus to do their remote learning. So please check that out if you haven't already got it or you could also uh, send us an email or a question, questions at Heathdale and we will send that survey link to you. So we're looking at supporting essential workers in that way. We also have identified that some children really need to be in a classroom with a teacher. And so those students will be invited in uh, by our learning enhancement, head of learning enhancement, Chris McClellan is going to be contacting families and uh, we'll be offering that option to families to send their child in so we can keep an eye on their learning during this time as well. So we'll be in touch with those families very soon. Thanks, Lynn. Like, uh, I really appreciate what you've just said there and both of you said. One of the things as I, in my introduction, I talked about we're finding ways and we're constantly thinking about ways to support their students in their learning and helping them to ha experience learning success. And as Lynn has just expressed then, yes, this time round we're offering uh, an, a, a broadening of the on-campus learning to a group of students that we've actually started to identify that would be better supported by a more structured program here. But we've also said that, you know, again, to use the one size uh, fits all, and make sure that you know, one size can't fit all models, a bottle, is that we're also recognising that some of that support may actually be that the teacher's actually working directly with the student, or may also be that the teacher's working directly with you as the parent. So one of the things is that we're just going to be constantly working at supporting each student in their learning through this time of remote learning. Another interesting question's popped up here and it says, why was the decision moved away from homework at this time? And I wish that decision had been made when I was in primary school, but that, that's another conversation for another time. But this one, maybe uh, Joe or Kathy, if you could explain about the, the homework, please. Um, I think one of the key reasons why we wanted to move away from homework at this point in time is because of the, the amount of work from the last uh, remote learning time. We, we learned that because students weren't always able to work within the parameters of the school day, that some students had to work weekends, some had to work uh, when the parents weren't on the computer because of their work, it, it created what was possibly a very long day for our students. So by removing the need to do homework on top of the general tasks uh, that needed to be completed, we thought would help them with their core learning uh, and, and achieve the things that we really want them to focus on without feeling that needed extra stress or burden 
of work on top of that, particularly when everybody's juggling for a little bit of time during the day to be able to access maybe a device or um, a resource for their learning. Uh, yeah, that's good. No, thank you, Joe. And I think one of the other things that we often uh, used to say too about the advantage of homework and one of the reasons for doing homework, it was not only would they consolidate some of the work that they've done at school, but it was also an opportunity for you as a parent to see what the students have been doing at school. Well, of course, with remote learning, you get to, you get actually even greater insight to what they're doing. So, but I think it's really the major situation sits around, as Joe explained, about the length of day for for both you as a parent as and also for the students. So another one is this: How will sports lessons be handled? You know, so and will there be assessments on video recording and uploading? So I'm presuming that that question there sits around assessments of the, of the sports or it might be actually separating two two different ways say in terms of the assessment let's make the assumption that it's not necessarily linked to uh the sport so i'm not sure which one of you three people go lynn would like you. to answer. yes so as far as sport and perhaps some of the other specialist classes that we're doing our teachers are going to be putting up some recorded uh, key learning that the children will be doing and being and participate in. So for sport, for instance, our PE teachers will work as a team across both campuses and they will they will start to provide recordings of skills lessons and activities that our children can practice, uh, perhaps in the backyard, perhaps in the lounge room. And, uh, and then they will also be uh, contacting uh, the children to say, how's that gone? How have you been able to do some of those things? And there may well be some uh, online conferences as well, just to talk through that with the, with the PE teachers. Assessments are something that uh, for us is going to, again, look a little bit different. So our teachers are working hard together to try and maintain a wonderful assessment program throughout term three. And of course, the modified program that we're doing and what we did last year, last term as well, is going to reflect those assessments in the practical day-to-day -day activities our children do. I hope that answers that question. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you, Lynn. Next question that uh, has popped up there, and, and I'm going to see if one of you three really want to answer this one. It's about school fees. So just, <laughs> oh, at hey, look at that. I've been thrown under the bus. No, that, <laughs> that's all right. Um, the question is actually, is the, uh, this college considering any reductions of school fees? As you may recall, when the first time we moved into remote learning, the way the college operated was that we first and foremost said that we want to stand with families who are experiencing financial distress and that and we are continuing that commitment. And so what we offered to those sorts of families were one of three options. They could uh, uh, defer their payment plan or they could reorganise and develop a new payment plan, or there were some concessions that were offered in regarding the payment of fees. That Those three options are still available to every family across the college, but, uh, but you, uh, that you're accessible on, based on a means testing and you need to speak with our accounts department. So uh, if you send an email to a, a accounts receivable and just to ask that you want to have some information around that, I know that Jenny Voss and the team will actually have an opportunity to catch up and talk through with that. The other thing that we did was we actually identified that uh, there was some user pay things like, for example, bus travel and uh, those families who have to pay for bus travel. Well, again, for this next six week period, we're saying that because we're at remote learning, we will not uh, be putting that charge on your fees, but we are crediting back the six weeks of uh, what would be under the bus fee because you're not using that service. So it's, it would be unfair for us to charge you for that. And then also we offered a 50% discount of the educational resources levy. Now the educational resources levy um, covers the cost of things like um, uh, uh, sports carnivals, uh, visiting performers, uh, excursions and things like that. And so what we were saying in the first time around, we gave you a 50% uh, credit back uh, to on your fees because we said well, remote learning, you won't be accessing those like we would normally. So we're going to hold on to that. Now, if we're going to, uh, we may be in a situation where that we'll give 
additional uh, credit back on that educational resources levy. But we'll be doing that more towards the end of the year if it's needed, because let's see how long remote learning would be uh, in operation. But if you notice, we act, I haven't spoken anything about tuition fees, and that is that we didn't offer any discount or reduction of tuition fees because of remote learning. And the main reason behind that is that we said that we were offering the, the educational support and teaching to our students in a remote thing. So our staff were working just as hard as they would be, if not harder, uh, at, in a remote learning than they would if it was campus based learning. And we will be following that model. So we will not be offering any discounts towards on tuition fees, but we will consider other user pay uh, levies that we have in place. If we need to credit them back, we will credit the, those back. Um, question six is, will online chess club continue for term three? Now I heard that that online chess club proved to be really successful. So that probably speaks a bit more so into the activities part too, doesn't it, Joe? Yep. Why don't you come and talk to us a bit about that, please? Uh, yes, chess club and these types of activities still continue. And it speaks to a larger uh, question, I suppose, about, well, we really want to keep our students connected, not just in that learning space and in that academic space, but also with our chess clubs. And uh, you'd remember the very popular um, Lego Masters, so different ways that we can continue to engage our students uh, with each other, with some interesting activities, we'll, we'll definitely be keeping those things available. So um, easy, quick answer, yes. And then also a few additions to that as well. Thanks. Yeah, that's good. Well, um, you know, the bottom line is that I didn't get involved in Lego Masters because I just didn't want to be shown up by the kids. <laughs> and I just, uh, the limitations that I have from there. So as I say to you, if you've got any questions, make sure that you uh, put them into the chat and we can come from there. So uh, how often will teachers check the work and assessment? So that is, a, is the next question that's, that's come through. So with a link, Kathy, maybe Kathy, it's your turn, please. Yes, so we're encouraging teachers to check one piece of written work a week, one sample of maths work a week, and then one other task a week. So although your child might do several activities, the teacher may not look at all of those activities, but when they come back to school, the teacher can have a good look at those. But we're getting them to look at what are the outcomes that we want to report on at the end of a semester and to just collect those activities that will inform them about their teaching program and what to teach next. So you will be required to submit, you know, at the maximum three pieces of work a week, um, remembering that teachers have to correct all of those and respond to all the families in their classes. The, thanks, Cathy. Look, when you answered then, it just uh, made me think back of something that I said to families during the last period of remote learning, and that was uh, the study that uh, Professor John Hattie uh, had conducted in New Zealand after the, the uh, earthquakes in Christchurch. And there was a whole term where schooling did not operate in Christchurch because of the, these earthquakes. And what, but then at the end of the year, the students in the, in the schools in around Ch uh, Christchurch actually outperformed many of the other schools in, in, that had not closed down. And Professor Hattie's research identified that what the teachers did in Christchurch was that they really focused in on the core essentials of what needed to be. And that was the thing that uh, the helping making sure that the students understood those uh, that set them up for their learning success. And so, Cathy, when you talk about our teachers are not going to assess everything, what the, I hear you talking about there is their assessment is going to focus on those core essentials making sure that the kids and their learning journeys are progressing well. So, so good on the team for that. So the final question. So what additional online resources will be available? You know, there's not only is there physical books or and how do we pick up things like readers from the school? So that looks like a win. <laughs> Thank you, Ross. Yes, well, right now I can tell you that our teams of teachers are working very hard to put these packages together that's going to be appropriate for every year level. So very soon you will see you will receive a letter from the learning team leaders 
and they will let you know what the program is going to be, the timetable for your class, for your children in each class, and uh, how you're going to be able to pick up the resources that you need. They will also be letting you know about links to various resources online that that are safe and, and good for your children to be involved in. And certainly there'll be some reading programs in there as well. So um, all of that information will come will come to you so that we can get underway in a, with a really positive start on Monday. Thanks, Lynn. Look, I think uh, again, that's just another testament of again about talking about how the way in which we're going to support uh, you and support each of the students that have been placed into our care and, and make sure that they've got the access to the things that they need to do. So let's, uh, I'm just conscious that time has moved on. And so let me just conclude uh, this, this time together. Just want to recognise you may not have had an opportunity to get a question uh, posed through this, this chat time. That's okay. There's still other opportunities to ask questions. So if you go to questions at heathdale.vic.edu.au and place your question in there, I've actually got a team working behind the scenes who gather those questions up and then they pass them to the uh, uh, some uh, different staff members who then can come back and give you a really well informed answer. So, uh, so remember, if you've got any questions, please to ask it. And the way we see it too is there is no such thing as a dumb question. Every question is valid. So even if it just is a really little niggly question, ask it because it's better to ask it, get the answer, and then you can move forward with confidence. So if you need to, reach out to us via questions at Heathdale, please, because we'd be more than happy to answer any additional questions. So I just wanna say in conclusion, thanks for joining us this afternoon, and we look forward to continuing to work with you, and we will be continuing to pray for you. Yes, that's right, the staff, we commit ourselves to pray for the families in, in, our, uh, in our community. We are praying that God, you will know God's blessing and protection. And as we pray for you in this season of challenge once again. But, so, but as I say goodbye, can I just say to you, stay safe, stay well, and we look forward to, uh, to reconnecting with you together on campus again in the future. Thanks, folks, for your time. Bye now.